Okay, so good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Zoom training. For those of you that don't know who I am, I am Katie, and I am part of the PMU Circle Pro. Also joining us this evening, we have the fabulous April Mays. We thought what better way to kick off the weekend than to give you some free training. So April is gonna be taking you through and showing you how to simplify your marketing and teach you how to fill up your books with videos that sell. So I hope you're all ready and we are gonna get started. Yeah, thank you. So I see that um, some people are, um, yeah. Everyone, yeah, you can hear me. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and share my screen. Then. Great, is everybody seeing that? Just see, let me see here, yes. Okay, you're seeing it, you're giving me a thumbs up, you're seeing it, okay, perfect, okay. Awesome, all right, so glad you guys are here. Welcome everyone. Um, so we are, um, I'm gonna let you, to, I'm seeing um, people entering into the waiting room, but I know that you're gonna um, let them in, so I'm gonna just ignore that and we'll get started. So you're here with, um, videos that sell um, so that you can stand out without stressing out, which I think is extremely important to business, beauty business and marketing. My name is April Meese and I have a lot of information to share with you. I'm super excited and I like participation. So raise your hand. You can either do the little emoji hand or just type a yes in the comments. If you feel like on online marketing is constantly changing and do you think it's getting more challenging to get new clients and get their attention? Give me a yes if that is you. And then also, how many of you feel like your social media audience has gone down, like it's gone down in the engagement? Um, is there, let me see if I can see the chat. Yes, I see Emma raised her hand. Awesome. And I'm going to change. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Actually, hold on just a moment. I'm just going to change my view so I can see you guys. Yeah, there we go. All right. So, yes, you are right. <laughs> um, it, let's just take a look at some marketing trends. I like to geek out on some of the stats for just a moment so that you can see it's all backed by science. Of course, you've heard the algorithms are changing. We know that the Facebook um, business page, your business page, has a 2% reach at best, meaning only 2% of your actual followers see your content. Uh, it's so sad. And then, of course, IG Instagram announced last year um, in July, Adam Monseri, the CEO of Instagram, said that there will no longer be a photo sharing platform. So everything that we've known about Instagram, your photos will not get the same amount of reach. And don't worry, we have a solution for that, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So the number of active advertisers has actually increased on the platform. So that means that costs are rising. And we've seen this, I know I've seen this personally. If you run ads, you can tell me this in the comments if you run ads, if you've noticed this, but a lot of people have said that Facebook advertising is getting too expensive. With the iOS changes, the Apple updates, um, they, Facebook actually admitted that, they're that they've had an increase of 50% in price with their ads. So the ads have doubled. I noticed in, 2019 to 2020, our ads had doubled, the cost of ads. So a cost of a lead had doubled. Then in 2021, again, there was a, a double. And then for 2022, we just had an ad campaign. And again, so when I look back at what it was just two years ago, um, it has quadrupled. It is unbelievable. So that is hard for a lot of people when people are having sticker shock. And here's the other thing is that consumer behavior is shifting. And so this study was done in the United States, but I would say that it is probably worldwide. I think in the UK, you guys would also agree that consumers only trust 50% of businesses, right? Trust has gone down. When we look at, do you trust um, politicians? Do you trust the media? Do you trust these things? The trust has gone down and the same thing is happening with businesses as well. 
And so with all of these constant changes, what do you need to know to really stay relevant and um, keep your business going, right? Um, how do you get seen by new clients and how do you build that trust, which I think is most important, so that the clients turn into buyers? And then your peace of mind is also important. So how do you stand out without stressing out? And here's the big takeaway is your marketing must evolve so that your permanent business will stay going, right? Will keep going and you don't get left behind, which is really key. And that's what you're here for. So today we're gonna to talk about the ABCs of marketing. I'm gonna break it down really easy for you. Um, we're gonna see that not all marketing is created equal in terms of ROI, which is the return on investment of time to grow your business, right? And by the end of the training, you're gonna have my great video sales framework. So I'll walk you through that. So you have more confidence to get on camera, to get more clients. And then I like to make this fun. So I have some prizes for most engagement. And then I have a special bonus for everyone at the end. So everyone gets a special bonus at the end, but I'm, I'm gonna have a prize for who's most engaged um, in the chat and having a lot of fun. Hopefully you're taking notes and get a lot of value from this. So that's what we're gonna cover. I'm just real quickly, who, want, who am I? I'm April Meese, and I'm an esthetician since 2001. Makes me a little bit of a dinosaur in this industry, but I've been a permanent makeup artist since 2003. And I think what why people really kind of seek out my advice is that I was able to build a multi six figure business while only working three days a week. And so it's and raising twin toddlers. So it's not about hustling more, right? Because I think we're in this like hustle kind of culture. And I, I really believe that you have to have some balance. And so I found systems to save you time and strategies. And that led to creating the Amplify Method, which is in my program, Elevate Your Beauty Business Program, and also um, Beauty Marketing Simplified is my podcast. And so I've been on Dr. Oz show and some other things that might lend some credibility to what I'm saying. But mostly I help beauty professionals like yourself um, increase your income up to 50% with the Amplify method so that you can have the business and life you desire. So let's get into it. The meat and potatoes or the um, tofu and tempeh if you're vegan. Okay, the A is for your audience attraction, right? And it's also for just that top of funnel awareness. So how many people remember this? Okay. If you were in school around my time, the teacher would wheel this bad boy in. And this was always a lot of fun for us. This meant that we were gonna get to watch a video in class and that was super exciting. So everybody got excited about that. And here's what I have to say, 2022 is the year of video again. And I say again, because I've been saying that for um, the past few years now, right? Video is so important and I'm gonna make a case for video. So by the end of this presentation with the formula that you're gonna get, our sales, our great videos formula and the case that I'm making for video, you're gonna be like, okay, I forgot that I, I might not have full confidence, but I know I need to do this and let's create a plan for doing it. So I'm gonna give you, and get a little geeky and give you a little stats. And then again, I'll give you the step-by-step -step system. So first of all, Here's some stats that show that video gets the most engagement on social media. So we just said that Instagram said that they're moving away from photo sharing, right? They're moving away from photos. They are prioritizing video in the feed. They've said this, they've, they've named their two competitors, TikTok and YouTube, which TikTok has exploded um, with the pandemic and so forth. They've named them and said, you know, we're going after them. We're trying to get more video. So we will promote your video. We will actually show it to more people and people that are not even following you. So they will suggest it. And they did this with live video with Facebook Live when it first came out. I think that was around 2015, 16, around that time. They would sh actively show it. And then we, of course, watch that decrease. But right now they're promoting video and it gets the most engagement. Also, videos get the most shares. How many of have you have noticed this? Um, uh, this is like, if you look at this, when you're thinking about text and image com uh, content combined, right? 1,200% more often it's shared. That's a crazy stat. And then I also love this, that 95% of viewers 
are more likely to remember a call to action. So when you say, go to my website, when you say, follow this, um, follow my page, or whatever you say, your call to action, after watching a video, 95% more likely to remember it than just seeing text alone. So if you're just putting like a, you know, here's my link or book an appointment in just a picture, even if it's like the most gorgeous browse you've ever done in your life, if you can put that in a video and then have the call to action, 95% of the viewers are more likely to take action after a, a video. Okay, here's some more stats for you. Um, how do consumers wanna learn? So here's what they've said. 68% say they'd rather learn about a company, a brand, or a service through a short video. Okay, that beats all of these other text-based articles, infographics, presentations, pitches, ebooks, and manuals. So videos are first, right? Again, consumers love seeing videos. These are all stats. Some of them are a little older, so you know that they've even grown since then. So if you're seeing that in 2019, the average user was spending six hours and 48 minutes watching videos online, we know that that has increased. <laughs> we know that that number has gone up. 54% of consumers say they want to see more videos from the brands that they support. Um, video role is 82% 82, uh, 82 of internet traffic is from video, okay? And then again, you know, I won't go through all of these stats, some of them you can see yourself, but video gets attention. It keeps your audience engaged and it plays an important role, and this is I think really the most important part, in their decision-making process. So whether they buy, this is not just about entertainment, this is about them buying, right? We need them to be buyers. So here you'll see this is from HubSpot in 2021, um, the videos and the purchasing decision. So consumers who watched explainer videos where you are explaining your services and how you can uniquely help them, 94% who watched bought. Is that crazy? I don't know if you guys are blown away by these stats, but I was like, wow. So they're watching the video and then they're taking action, they're buying. So you can see all of those um, stats for yourself. And then again, if you see just this bottom one right here, so people are saying with your time, again, your time, we have the two assets, obviously, time and money um, that we are putting into our business, but I think out of the two, time is most valuable. And so if you're putting your time into your marketing and you're creating you know, beautiful graphics or before and after pictures, you wanna make sure that you're getting your return on investment. So if you're gonna put your time into marketing, what I'm gonna make the argument for is to put your time into video because that is going to have the biggest return on investment. And so you see 93% of businesses landed a new customer after sharing a video on social. Is anybody else blown away by that? I hope you guys are like, woo, some light bulbs are going on. I know we see this all the time in my um, program with my students. They're usually surprised. They're like, okay, April, I followed your formula. We go a little bit deeper in my program, but um, they, you know, they kind of walk through the script and so forth. And then they're like, and I can't believe it. It happened, it, it works. And I'm like, of course it works. So um, you just need to have a system where you feel more confident. And obviously, um, you know, video engagement, they're gonna, going to engage with your website longer if there's a video. So it's not just your social media. If you're also using video on your website to connect with your clients, to educate your clients. So video streaming has, um, the spending has jumped to $24 billion. I mean, I, it's just, it blows my mind. And so you're seeing a lot of top brands that are actually getting into this space. For example, Disney said that um, the CEO, Bob Iger, said that it is their highest priority over all of their theme par parks, over all of their movies, over all of their merchandise even. Video became their highest priority. And then, of course, with the release of Disney+, Plus, which actually competed against some of their other brands that they own. They own some other stations. When they released Disney Plus, it has actually, and it's probably more since um, this stat came out because this was um, February of 2021, but um, it is um, forecast again to have made $525 million from just doing video, adding the video to there. 
their 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 way of doing business. So attention is the new currency, right? We're even seeing um, in Tesla. Tesla has. Um, these, you know, they've put YouTube and Netflix into their cars, right? Um, so they have jumped into embracing video. So when you see a lot of these big brands that are connecting um, to their clients with more video, we know that video is here to stay and it's just going to become more and more important. So, and also 5G connecting the world even faster. And then the most downloaded apps, of um, 2021, you'll see that eight out of 10 are actually video apps or have video in the app. So TikTok, YouTube, obviously, Facebook has YouTube, uh, has video, um, HBO Max, Instagram, that type of thing. So these, this is where consumer attention is at. And this is what we need to pay attention to. We need to be um, where the people are, where the clients are. So video grows your brand and awareness 10 times faster than the average social media post because the algorithm, as I said before, will actually promote video. And so we talked about awareness and attention. So video is going to get their attention. And then B is to build trust. And video is going to build trust and connection. And I like to say that we are not in the beauty business. We are in the trust business. Because we are working on people's face, obviously, and, and bodies sometimes as well. But permanent makeup is, it's, it's very intimate. I mean, you know, just in the naming of it, right? This is not something that they can just cover up quickly, right? Um, this is something that requires a lot of trust. And so we're going to talk about how do you build that trust and connection with your audience so that they do become buyers, so that we're not just randomly putting out um, video content, but we're really intentional with it. So this marketing change is what I call the relationship revolution. And um, this is the prospective client is saying, do I trust you? Do I like you? Um, you know, do I see myself actually having a service from you? And so this leads me to a little story and I'd like you to meet my bunny. I don't know if somehow they, they got, we've got these little things on the screen, but that's fine. Um, but this is our, our family pet. His name is Snickerdoodle, like the cookie, Snickerdoodle the bunny. So, and when we got Snickerdoodle, um, I didn't know anybody that had a bunny for a pet and I thought that seems kind of odd, but we are now a bunny family. Um, but when I got Snickerdoodle, here's the thing that I just wanted to cuddle that little fur ball. He is so cute, but bunnies do, bunnies are prey animals. Okay. So they are used to running from people and anything really. Um, as Snickers is what we call them. We actually have them a few, a few names, Mr. Doodle, Dr. Doodle. It changes every day, Senor Doodle. Um, but Snickies, Snickers is what I like to call him. And He's not built to trust, right? And I wanted to show little Snickers, I wanted to show this little bunny that I could help him. And maybe you're feeling this way with your clients, right? They don't trust you, but you wanna show them that you can help them, that I have something that really all my love could change his life, right? So I decided to do a little research, okay? And this is what you should do as well with your clients, do a little research of what they like. So I found out, what type of content would get Snickers attention? And it turns out that romaine lettuce is the food of the bun people, <laughs> that the bunnies love romaine lettuce. So I started getting his attention. And here is what started because I love marketing, my bunny marketing funnel, <laughs> awareness and attention. And I decided to make this a project of how I could earn Snickers trust. So here we are at the attention and awareness funnel, just like you are with your clients. And I want to get him down to really trusting me. So I began to show up every day and I showed up around 9 a.m. and then a little bit longer live at 1 p.m. And I do that because studies show that these are the best times to show up live for your audience. Okay, so that's a little tongue in cheek, but this actually did happen. I began to come in and see him because he would hide under the bed. He would hide 
So studies show that these are the best times to show up for your clients and for live video. And they're asking, do, does this person, your audience is asking, do they understand my problem best, right? And do I like them? This is what they're asking themselves, right? Do they really understand me? Like, do you have empathy? Do you show that you understand where they're coming from? You're not just talking about their, 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 your service, you're talking about their struggles, okay? Really important. So I had to build that connection with Snickers. I had to get past his natural instinct to run away and not trust me, right? And I had to show him that I have something of value to offer him and I can even improve his life. And so my question is how many of you are trying to get your client's attention and show the prospective client that you can make their life better? How many of you can relate to that? Give me a yes in the chat if that is you, if you feel that way at times. And so this is what really made me realize again that video builds connection and trust because you become a familiar face right they start seeing you and therefore they feel like they know you even when they don't know you okay and so there's been all kinds of studies about when you show up on camera um, people feel like they know you more and when they can see you eye to eye even if it's through a screen it will build trust and connection. So they're saying, do I see you consistently, even if it is imperfectly? Are you showing up consistently? And when I say that word consistently, I mean, consistently is like, um, it's like the granny panties word of, of marketing. Like nobody, nobody wants it. It's not very sexy, but listen, it gets the job done, it works, okay? So consistency is where it's at and you have to be consistent with your video. So for potential clients to trust you and want to work with you, you need to position yourself as the go-to expert. Not just like, yes, I need her services, but more so of like, I have to have her services and nobody else compares. This is how we, you want to be seen. This is how we wanna really position your brand. So how do you do that? Well, we're gonna get into that. Well, we're gonna embrace the video because as we said before, video builds authority, it builds recognition, it builds trust and loyalty, and it's gonna get the most time and most, most watch time. So the opportunity to show up and stand out and convey the value of your services. So show of hands, you can either use a little emoji hand or you can just say yes in the chat. How many people have watched a video before buying a product or a service from a company? Yes, I see some hands raised, awesome. Yeah, so Zappos Shoes, I don't know if anybody um, has bought shoes from this brand online, it's, um, a multi-million dollar company, so I'm sure a lot have. Zappos shoes realize that, um, you know, it's hard to get people to buy shoes because usually people want to try them on. So it's hard to get people to buy shoes online. And so what they did is they started making these little explainer videos where they just had an average Joe, like an average employee, talk about the shoe, nothing scientific, just talk about the show and shoe and kind of show the shoe. Right. And what they noticed is they had an 80% conversion just from these little explainer videos. Even if it's not someone modeling the shoe, it's just kind of talking about the shoe and showing the shoe, a video that um, talks about your services, okay? So here is the framework. We're gonna go through great, great, no, we're gonna rewind. We're gonna go through great, with a T, great videos. Oh, and by the way, you can mess up. You can do it. I fumble over my words all the time. You probably have caught other things that I've said wrong. It's okay, we're all human, it's fine. You can do this. So we're gonna do great videos and the G stands for grab their attention. So we want to grab their attention and this can be through a visual, this could be through audio, this could be through both, right? So we wanna start with a hook, right? Every email has a subject line, which is a hook. Every uh, post usually has a hook, the top of the caption, 
it's something that's going to grab their attention. Any YouTube video has a thumbnail that is the hook to you know get their attention, make them want to click, make them want to find out more. Okay, so this is the promise of what they will get, what they will learn. Okay, why they should stay, why they should listen to you, right? So I started and I said, marketing is changing, right? We've seen the numbers go down. And if you want to stay relevant, you need video in your business. So that was kind of my hook at the beginning. Okay. And so for a lot of people, they're like, oh, I need to pay attention. Here's all these stats. Okay, this is why. So the hook can be a question. It can be something that questions are great because they actually invoke curiosity. Like our mind doesn't like what's called an open loop. So you'll see this often on um, TV shows that were like up next on Love Island or next week on The Bachelor. It's the most shocking rose ceremony ever. <laughs> and they've been saying that for, I don't know how many seasons, um, but you know, they can continue to say it because we're like, oh, what is it? What, I wonder what it's gonna be. And so a hook will create, a question will create that curiosity. Um, it could be a provocative statement. Like if you're not doing video in your business, um, your business could be closing, right? I could have said something like that, right? It could be something about the pain or the problem. So for you, it might be something about, you know, browse or whatever service is your signature service that you offer. You wanna have a hook at the beginning of your video. So what you need to know before you book your next browse service. Or it could be a question like, um, have you seen some scary eyebrows? What you need to do to avoid being a victim of that, right? Whatever it is, I'm just rambling. I'm just coming up with some things, but you're gonna start with the G is to grab their attention. Okay, are we good? Thumbs up, does everybody get that? Okay, I'm in California. It's um, afternoon here, so I still get to drink coffee. Okay, so the next one is your R. R is to relate to the, your audience with a story. Okay, so stories, you might have heard where people say that um, facts tell, but stories sell. People remember stories. People remember um, stories, you know, like they might forget all, you might forget all of this content, but you might remember that little story about Snickerdoodle that bunny. Right. And it's funny how people have um, come up to me after conferences where I've presented this and they're like, do you really have a bunny? <laughs> you know, I think they're going to ask me some big marketing question. They're like, do you really? And I'm like, yes, I didn't just make that story up. We really have a bunny. So tell a little story that they can relate to. And this is the story is going to make your hook relative to them. Right. Also, your story could show understanding and empathy. So you could, your story could be about a client that you just saw that day. Today, I just had a client come in with alopecia and her story just touched my heart. And here, I'm gonna tell a little bit about her story. She was worried about her, you know, and then you can go into her story, right? About how she felt. She was worried about it being too much and what her family might say. And, you know, you might not have alopecia, but you might also have sparse brows. So we're relating the story because people find themselves in stories. Right. So, you know, there's an expression that marketing is what you say about yourself, um, but your your emotion, your brand emotion and your brand vibe is really about what other people say about you. And that is the brand emotion is how you make people feel. So you want to bring people into your story and tell stories about clients that they can relate to. Right. So that's the power of story because the brain loves stories. Hold on, I think somebody's unmuted. Can you just check for me, Kate? Okay, so people remember stories and the audience will remember stories just like we remember songs, right? Like, you know, if I started singing the song, baby shark, do, 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 do. If anybody has kids, you'd be like, no, don't sing it. Or the new one is Bruno, the new Bruno song from Encanto. I have, I have little ones, so. Whew. That song will stick with you for a while. We remember stories we, just like we remember songs, right? We remember the alphabet because it's in a song, right? So hearing those stories also, studies show, releases cortisol. Cortisol is what helps form memories. And dopamine um, helps keep us engaged. And oxytocin, we know, is the love hormone, which helps foster connection. 
So when you tell stories or people hear stories, it releases all three of those hormones, which will build connection with your brand. So that is the R. So let's move on to the E. Oh, well, let me just tell you, this is just to give you a little example of telling stories. This is an orthodontist. He's a, a dentist um, in Arkansas. His name is Benjamin. Benjamin was trying to get his business going. So he started using stories in his brand. He's now known as the Bentist, <laughs> like the dentist, but it's the Bentist. And he noticed that his brand started growing. He now has 2.5, it's probably even more than this now, 2 sorry, 2.6 million followers on TikToks. TikTok, just doing little videos um, about like, you know, funny videos about, uh, you know, a parody about someone getting braces and then eating a bunch of sticky candy or, um, you know, just talking about things that he encounters with his clients. So he was telling the stories of his clients and he does it in an entertaining way, but you don't have to dance and point and do all of those things. You can really just show up and tell stories about your brand, why you do what you do and about your clients. But I just thought that was really funny. All right, so E is for explain your topic. So after you've got the hook, right, you've grabbed their attention, you have um, related to them, we wanna have that connection with them with a story. The next thing is going to explain your topic in three to five main um, little value points, right? little tips that you have for them. So we wanna simplify it. The brain doesn't like things that are complicated, right? If you confuse, you lose. So we wanna bring this down to points that they can take home. What are the three, three to five, studies show that people like odd numbers. So what are the three to five main tips that you can give about this, right? What, what do they need to know before they have your service? What are the three things that they need to do after they have your service? right? Or what are the five things they need to know about how to take care of their permanent eyebrows, right? Those are the simple things. We want to break it down, the information. So it's easy for people to remember just a few points, and it's easier for you to remember. So if you're thinking, I'm going to forget everything I have to say, first of all, take a deep breath. You've got this. You know this information. You are capable, you are smart. You probably answer these frequently asked questions every day on your website, right? You have them on your website, you probably have calls about them every day. So um, you probably get these questions all the time and you could answer them in your sleep. So just remember, you know these points, but if you're nervous, put a few of these points that you're like, okay, I was gonna talk about this, this, and this, right? You know, um, avoid the sun, don't exercise too soon, whatever you're gonna talk about, right? you put those little points on a post-it note and put it right near the little camera lens of your computer or whatever device you're using, okay? And then after you've made your, after you've talked about your topic, you're gonna transition to how your services will help, okay? So you, you grab their attention, you related to them with a story, you're gonna explain the topic in three to five main points, and then we're gonna bring it home. All right, so here is another, I use these off the wall examples because usually people say, I can show you lots of my students and how their business has grown, but then it feels very like kind of overly promotional. So if I use other industries, people are like, wow, this guy talks about plumbing. Guys, he talks about toilets. <laughs> His business has grown dramatically. If this guy can show up and talk about a gazillion ways to, uh, Unclog, unplug and unclog your toilet, we can show up and talk about how our beauty services help improve their lives and give them confidence and all of the benefits, right? So he now um, has, I forget his name. Um, it's funny because I actually see him at conferences. Um, he, I was just at Social Media Marketing World in San Diego. It's usually like 5,000 people go to this conference. And this guy has actually um, been cited like on stage, people talk about how much his business is um, booming. His, his, just a little pun, his business was going down the toilet. I just had to do it. I just had to do it before he started using video in his marketing. So I'm a, I'm a little cheeky sometimes. Okay. So what, here's what you want to do. What do your prospects need to know in order to buy your services? Okay. That's what you need to write down. What does my client need to, this is a, that's a writer downer guys. Write down, 
what does my client need to know, feel, think, and believe to buy my services? Okay, sometimes we think we're talking about these things, but we're not. Okay, so write that down. So that's what he did. And now Roger, that's his name. Roger has 1.3 million views on um, his YouTube channel. And he's nationally recognized at like not only his industry, but all over. Um, and so super um, important. Here's another one. This is an ophthalmologist. It shows up and he just answers. He does short little videos answering frequently asked questions. Right? We all can do that. We get those questions all the time. So here are some top video categories for you. Because if you're like, I don't know what to talk about, you can talk about your brand story. You can talk about your clients stories. You can talk about frequently asked um, questions, or you can even go to answer the public. I love answer the public. That's what everybody's typing into Google, right? You can start to Google something, your industry, you can say microblading, and then you'll find like Google will populate all the, the questions, the top questions that people put into Google. You can do some behind the scenes videos. You can do how to and educational. You can do entertaining. You can do a service or product walkthrough, and you can really do some thought leadership. Like what is something that you feel strongly about in your industry? Do you take a stance for microblading, against microblading? You know, I'm not gonna start a controversy. I'm just saying like, what do you feel strongly about? Talk about it, right? Why do you do what you do? And why is that in service of your audience? Why do they need to know that? Okay, is this resonating with you guys? Am I going too fast? Sometimes I, I can be a fast talker, but. I have so much to share with you guys. So um, when the message doesn't resonate with your prospective client, it doesn't matter what medium you use. Hear me on that. It doesn't matter if you are dancing your heart out on Reels or TikTok or anything. It doesn't matter if you are posting, you know, five videos a day on YouTube. If the message doesn't resonate, it doesn't matter. So you really need to take the time to think about your messaging. Messaging is most important. You know, somebody could have a great um, video about antique cars. I don't wanna buy an antique car. I'm, I'm not really into to cars in general. So that message would not resonate with me. I'm not their target audience. So make sure you really focus more instead of the tactic, focus more on the message. Um, take the time to really cultivate a unique voice and take the time to really, instead of just learning, okay, what hashtags do I need to know? Again, those are the tactics. It's more important to understand your messaging, okay? Um, so meaning you could use SEO, uh, social media, all of these things to get your awareness. Um, but if you don't have a message that translates the value, the value, what the value you provide, and overcomes objections with your brand positioning, it'll be difficult to get clients, right? So you need the right message to the right person at the right time. So that is your messaging. And um, the A in great videos is for authentic proof. Everything you say, you have to back it up with proof. Remember we said at the beginning that we are in a society and a time of the highest amount of distrust right there might be some of you that are like i don't know about her like there's probably a few of you that are like i don't know if i even trust her right that just happens that's how we are programmed as humans especially now um with what's you know happened um in our society so we need to always back everything up with authentic proof and actual evidence so this is your testimonials this is stats this is examples Anything that you can give, this could be even examples of other things. So you can say, you know, you can show celebrities that are having permanent makeup, right? We've all seen, um, what's her name, Helen Mirren, and all of these other celebrities that people have come out and said, yes, I got my brows done, right? Start to use those examples, right? Actual proof, social proof is really important. We value the opinion of strangers sometimes more than we value um, our family and friends so we have to always back things up with actual proof and evidence and so just to show you i walk what i talk uh this is donna donna maynard she actually um did my elevate your beauty business program she's an extreme introvert 
So if you're sitting at home going, I just don't know, it all sounds good, but it's just not for me. That's the way Donna was. And she said, I said, just trust me, Donna. You know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And she said, okay, I know I need to do this. And so she did it. And I want you to see not just the reactions, 636 comments, but she had 122 shares. Let me just tell you, her also, her business has increased 62%. She was already making six figures. So she's making multi six figures and working only four days a week. So she's having a, a more quality, a better quality of life. So it's not just about the money. It's just about what you do with it, right? It's about what the money makes possible. So I want you to see that those are my stats. I'm backing it up with actual proof and evidence just from doing video. So now the T stands for tell them what you've told them and tell them what to do next. So this is gonna be your call to action, but you're gonna do a little recap because people forget or sometimes people come in at the middle, right? They catch you in the middle of your live or they catch you right when you're ending, that type of thing. So I like to do a little bit of a recap. So you'll repeat the hook. So today we were talking about you know, the, the three things that you needed to know before you book your next permanent makeup appointment, or, you know, the three things um, we are comparing this service to this service, ombre brow versus hair stroke, whatever it is, right? Um, and I went through and broke down the, the key points that you need to know. And it was boop, 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 and boop. Okay, so you're going to tell those. And then you're going to have the call to action, which is the next step. We always want to finish with the call to action because we want them to become clients. So it could be just like, follow my page. It could be simple. It could be, you know, if you have an email list, if you're doing that, you know, it could be like download my free guide because after you've used this video, you can actually have this video transcribed and that could be right part of your free guide. We can multipurpose that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to recap, right? Because I'm, this is very meta. If you noticed, I'm, I'm starting with you grab your attention. I'm relating to you with the story of snickerdoodle. Hopefully that um, got a little of a connection with you. Um, and then we've had our tips in here. We've shown social proof, actual proof. And now here I'm going to tell you what I've told you and the call to action. So this is the opportunity is, I mean, it's greater more than ever to show up with video, right? To stand out, to build credibility, to gain trust and convey your value. So you're gonna grab their attention, relate, you're gonna to explain the topic three to five points. You're gonna offer authentic proof and evidence. And then you're gonna tell them what you're, you've told them and what to do next. So that's my little recap. So here is a bonus that I have for you. This is on my podcast if you wanna screenshot it. I think it's episode number 77. It's seven ways to repurpose your content so that you can take that video and then turn it into um, little quotes. If you want to use and make graphics, right? Little quotes that you have and put those graphics on social media. You can take that video and you can have it transcribed. You can use a service called rev.com and change that video into your blog, right? So it's transcribed into your blog. You can take parts of that video and from that transcription and turn that into your email, your e-zine, your newsletter, whatever you want to send out. You can take that video and turn it into an audiogram. Um, and an audiogram is just where they just hear the audio and there's just a, a, a graphic behind it. So there's, it's not part of the video. You can make video clips. All of that is seven ways to purpose it. And there's um, even some more that I didn't cover in that um, little bonus there that I have for you. So I want you just to, how am I doing on time? Hold on, let me just see. Am I, am I okay on time? Am I a little over or st I'm still okay? Okay, great. Okay, so I, I think that the um, takeaway, if you only take away three things um, away from today, I want you to know that you have something valuable to offer. And when I say you have something valuable to offer the world, there was a time when I went out with this guy who was not right for me, but I thought that he was my soulmate. <laughs> and I remember there was a time that he said, um, you know, well, the, the woman that I'm going to marry is going to be highly educated, a world traveler, all of these things that I wasn't. 
And it was like devastating to me when he said that, because I just thought like, what? We'd been dating for like almost two years. And I thought that I was the woman he was going to marry. And I realized that he made me feel smaller. And, and then I, you know, eventually we broke up. I'm not with him and, and it all worked out fine. But there are so many things in our life that can make us feel smaller. And there might've been somebody that in your life that told you that you weren't good enough, or you are afraid of judgment or fear of um, what people will think or not feeling like you are worthy. But I'm telling you, you have something to offer the world. Your services change lives. You give people confidence. You give them more time in their day to make memories with their family. What we do is so much more than beauty. And you know that, uh, you know, when somebody's cried, like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. You've changed my life. We've all experienced that with, with clients. And so it's time for you to step up and share your message. It's time for you to don't hide behind your before and after pictures. People need to see your face. They need to connect with you, right? They need to hear your voice and you need to build that connection and trust with your audience. So you can grow your business with these leveraged marketing plan, right? So that you're not working harder for clients and sales. There's a leveraged way of doing it. It's with systems, okay? And having the right systems and support um, will help you reach your goals faster. And so hopefully this has encouraged you to think about video in a new way. You have some topics in your head. You know that you have all the content you need. And because this is what you do, so you know about what you do, you talk, you can talk about that and how you can help and just show up and talk to the camera as if you were talking to your best friend, okay? And so that's when people will connect with you. And the people that are for you are gonna be for you. And the people that are against you, eh, don't worry about them. So, and now does anybody wonder what happened with Snickerdoodle? Is anybody like, what happened to the end of the story? Yes holding that little fur ball. Now, not all the time does he let me cuddle with him, but now I've developed that trust. I've developed that trust with him because I continuously and consistently showed up. I showed my face. I offered valuable content and I showed him that he can trust me. And so um, that's what I want you to do with your business and brand as well. And I will um, stop my screen share, but I'll leave this up for anybody that needs to grab that one more time. And then we can take some, some questions and then we'll pick a winner as well. Oh, thank you, Lynette. I wasn't able to see all of the chat, but I see some of it now. Oh, thanks, Emma. Do you want to take, Kate, do you want to do questions? Do you have questions that people came at? questions or do you want us to have them raise their hand? Yeah, I think let's um, get anybody that's got a question to raise their hand and then April can go through that with you. I know Lynette did say about being confident about doing videos. Um, so what other additional little tips have you got April for like um, artists that aren't used to putting themselves like in the firing line, so to speak, and putting themselves out there? What kind of just quick little tips could you give them on that? You know, the thing is that when you first do something, we have all these stories in our head, right? Like the big what if, just like when you started doing brows, like what if I screw this person's face up? <laughs> like what if I permanently, permanently damage them? What if I take an eye out? Like what all of those things, right? We have all those thoughts. And I say it's like that mean girl voice. But when you put your faith above your fear, when you put your purpose and your mission, if you're like, you know, you just almost have to get hungry about your brand. Like, I know I need to show up and it just becomes like, I got to do it. Right. And so, listen, I don't love, you know, say, putting on makeup and, and getting in front of the camera. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I think this is going to, people are going to think it's stupid or whatever, but I do it. I actually batch my videos. So on the day I, I, kind of have like three or four different shirts that I'm going to wear and I'll change, you know, shirts, tops, earrings, whatever. And I'll film like just, uh, I think it was Tuesday of this week. I filmed like 
five reels. I saved them, saved them to my camera, not just save them as a draft. And then I'll put those out like over time. Um, or I'll take, we'll do one long form video a week. So I'll do one um, Instagram live. And then we'll chop that up. We maybe put it on my podcast. We might put it on, you know, we put it in different areas. Um, but the more you do it, you know, I'm going to say this, the more you do it, the more competent you get, the more um, confident you get, right? You just get better because, you know, when you get more familiar with it and the more familiar you get with something, the more confident you get with something. So we have yeah. a question from Emma who's saying, would you like, um, say like, hi, then it's me and video yourself in your salon. Like, where do you film yourself or like do your reels and everything? Is it clinic based or do you kind of go outside as well? Yeah. So here's what I would say. First of all, don't overthink it. I don't think that there is one right way or one wrong way to do it. It's like, um, you know, making a turkey, right? You can deep fry it, you can brine it, you can cook it, whatever, right? Do it however you want. There's not one right way. I think that, you, sure, people will give you, these are the top tips. This is the best time to post. This is the best, you know, have these hashtags search. There's all of these like little formulas. I would just like to see you do it because we can overthink it all day long. And I think the other thing is that, you know, implementation trumps information. So we kind of will do a little bit of like, oh, well, I'm researching. And so, you know, it's like perfectionism, procrastination. Well, I'm, I'm trying to get this perfect. So I'm just going to keep researching. I'm just going to keep re researching. And you want to implement. And then you'll start to realize, okay, that didn't work or that did work. Um, a few things I would say is, yes, if you're going to do a little behind the scenes, like maybe you take your camera and you take your phone and you walk them through like you're opening up your door. This is what, you know, this is the waiting room. This is what it would feel like to have, to come in, to have an appointment. And then I'm going to, you know, give you some paperwork and maybe you do a little behind the scenes. People like to see that. We like to see, you know, we're voyagers. We like to see like, or uh, voyagers. We like to see what people, you know, where they live or what their office is like and, you know, how, how is it going to feel? So you can show them a little behind the scenes. I think um, those work. I think switch it up. Don't always have the same background if you're if you're talking about entertaining reels i think that pick some topics you can jump on trends you know that's an easy way to get started if you want or you can just start showing up and and without music without dancing without anything and just talking about um your frequently asked questions is, is an easy way to kind of show up um but i would also caution you to um like i do a, a, some that are entertaining but i try to make most of my videos be about business or have some value because i know of a friend of mine who has a really big audience and he did a video of him in target um so like you know he was just doing like a shopping video um is target in the uk i don't even know that um i've been there so many times and i can't remember ever seeing a target do you guys have target no i don't think we do over here Okay, so this is not a great comparison, but say he's in Harrods, right? He does a video of himself in Harrods, right? And he's um, like just being, you know, kind of silly and cheeky and whatever. He's just doing a little video. And he got this huge following, right? He got all of these new followers. You've heard of uh, like the video went viral basically, right? But those people are not his people. They're not his audience. So, you know, now he's got this huge audience of people that are not his audience. And I can tell you about the pros and cons of that. But um, I think that the um, main thing is just to, you know, have you can have some entertaining ones in there, but mostly keep it brand focused. So we've got um, Kim asking, is it worth creating a YouTube channel and uploading videos onto there as well as her Instagram and Facebook? Or would you say not to start with? Like, when do you know when is the right time to start a YouTube channel? Yeah, so I'll tell you, if I've had a YouTube um, channel on my list for the past, oh my gosh, probably almost a decade. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I had a influencer who had 400,000 followers um, on YouTube in like 2016 or something like that. And so ever since, and she brought me in a lot of clients, right? I didn't have my own. So you can always get on somebody else's channel and, and, or get with, you know, connect with an influencer. And that's a great way to get out there. When any, any platform you pick, 
right? As long as you've got one platform going well, like you're like, I've really aced Instagram, or I really feel like my audience is still growing, but I got this down. I have a system. It doesn't feel overwhelming. Now I can move to the next platform, right? Like we waited a full year and a half of having our podcast before we entered and brought in one more thing, right? And so we'll be releasing our YouTube channel this year. Um, and we've got all this video content, but it's not just about the content. I know that there has to be the strategy behind it because YouTube, every platform has its own way of working, right? So there's a, a strategy for YouTube where you have to have a really good thumbnail, right? The little image that you click on. So the thumbnails are important and the subjects and the way you um, get found because YouTube is really more concerned about click-through rate. It's not about your subscribers. They wanna know people are clicking. Um, so there's a strategy that has to be behind it. it has to be behind it. I love the expression, if you chase two rabbits, you catch none, right? If you're going in too many directions, right, in all the shiny objects in your business, which we can all be guilty of because we're multi-passionate, you start to feel like none of it is working because what you're not doing, I see, see this all the time with my students, is they have a lot of these what I call half-built bridges. And with these half-built bridges, they don't get to the other side. The other side is where momentum is. So if you can just stick with one thing, so if you just start, if your main platform of choice is Instagram and you know you get really good at Instagram, you're doing video on there, on that platform and you're killing it and really wanna take it and repurpose it, you can repurpose it, but just know it's a different strategy. But that being said, I have to tell you, I love YouTube because I'm just gonna tell you, YouTube, one, your videos will be continued to be seen year after year after year. People will go back and see a video from two years ago, right? I've done this. I've seen people's videos come up from two years ago. I watched one video that was current and then I watched another video that was filmed two years ago because it just, YouTube suggested it to me. See, YouTube actually promotes your content. Unlike social media that kind of has become like a, a pay to play, except for reels, they're promoting reels right now and IG is promoting reels. But other than that, it's pay to play. It's hard to get your content seen. YouTube will promote your content because YouTube gets paid by the ad that's in front of your video. So they wanna keep their users happy. So you can have a video that was two years old that is still bringing in clients. You're not gonna have a reel that was two years old or even an IGTV or a live two years ago. Nobody's gonna find it, right? So that's, a, that's the other thing about um, YouTube is it can continue to build, it can continue to bring in clients um, you can repurpose it again. If you're already doing the video, you can take it and just, as long as you have the strategy behind it, you understand the thumbnail, you understand a few of the, um, keywords and things like that to get the click through. You have to really get your messaging down YouTube. You have to make sure because if you're not having watch through time, so there's click through CTR. This might be a little bit too much, but I can you just tell me like, I go, I go down a rabbit hole. So if I need to stop. I've had a lot of rabbit jokes today. <laughs> Anyways, um, so if I need to stop, just be like, stop. Um, so there's click-through rate, and then there's also watch time that are they watching enough so it's not clickbait, that type of thing. Um, but um, yeah, the, the thing about the YouTube is you just need to know that the strategy behind it and make sure you're getting that hook, your story down, and also one of the things about YouTube, and you probably have heard this, that YouTube has YouTube shorts now, which are basically like your TikToks, your um, IG. So as long as you take the watermark off, you know, there's apps that can help you do that. You know, thank you, Lynette. Um, as long as you take the watermarks off, you can use it on those other platforms and there's apps that will help you do that. And um, because you know, if you try to use your TikTok on your Instagram, you get penalized if it still has that watermark on there. So, yeah. So. Amazing. So we've got a few other questions I'll just read out for you because they're a bit further up. Uh, Rebecca's saying that she doesn't really get reels. And when I pre-record, I tend to recall constantly. So I stick to doing lives and force them. But is, is this any good? Do I need to do reels as well? What would you say yeah. to that? So so I resisted reels for a long time because I was just like, you know, I, 
even though I'm silly and, um, and like to have fun, I, I always feel like my content needs to be like educational, right? Like I just felt like I just wanted to uh, really, I just didn't, I just resisted the educational part, uh, the entertainment part. I, I resisted the entertainment part. I really wanted to focus on education and value. I wanted people to say like, oh, that was worth my time. I always want them to say that was worth my time. So I resisted reels for a while, but you know, you can't ignore the stats of what people are watching, right? The users are just like they said, attention is a new currency. And so I think with anything, I just, we had to decide in our, with our team, how is this strategy going to work in our business? How are we going to have a few entertainment or connection, or maybe it's just to grab them, but then we also, we kind of sprinkle them in. I think of it like seasoning, right? You, you don't want to do too much entertaining with your reels. Um, it's like putting too much salt in, in a, you know, when you're cooking, right? That'd be too much, right? So think of it like seasoning, a few entertaining, and that's the way I look at reels. They can be entertaining and educational, but the thing is that short form video, people just don't have time for long form video. And you see me, like, Lord have mercy, I can ramble. I mean, I'm sure you see that. So it's hard for me to, you know, keep it condensed and find what I would want, need to say or want to say. I think having a system where maybe you have your, if you have a team or a virtual assistant, I totally recommend a virtual assistant. Um, you know, even if you're on a budget, you can get a virtual assistant for um, like three pound an hour. I mean, seriously, like in another country, they're not expensive. Um, very efficient, hardworking, and very knowledgeable about these things. They can help you do the research on maybe what reels are trending or what reels might be good for your audience or how you can put this to make it more of a um, reel about your business. If you wanted to copy something like that, or you can just show up and do reels about things that you've already talked about on your lives and make them short clips. So for example, maybe you had a uh, IG live. I'm sorry, who asked that question? I don't want to, I want to make sure I was. Oh, uh, so that was Rebecca asking that. Okay, Rebecca. So awesome, Rebecca. So maybe you have a um, Instagram live that you did about, um, let's just say you did it about like sanitation, right? Or, you know, maybe how you set up your tray or, you know, anything that was like unique to um, how you do things. And you want people to know that like, you're really all about that. Maybe you just take one point in there, right? So maybe your, you know, maybe your video, sorry, I have this fur chair and this fur gets everywhere. Anyways, um, I, maybe you have your video about just one point. The reel could be just about one thing, right? And so it would be just a smaller clip. So the, the short answer to that is yes, I think you should do the reels. Um, if you can also repurpose them on TikTok, then you could do that too. If you have a virtual assistant, the only thing about that is that um, you actually should upload them yourself. You don't want to have a virtual assistant because um, that you have to be careful your account could get shut down. So just be careful. So I would rather have your virtual assistant possibly do the research for you. Um, we like to have like what's called a, a Google Sheet where we have um, like links to, uh, so we're all coordinating that and you can have that in either like an Asana or a Trello or a project management board. Did that help you, Rebecca? And if not, like maybe I could, you could unmute and I could ask you, um, you could an ask me more specifically. So will you, would you always recommend that April then? So when uh, obviously um, artists are doing their reels to kind of mix it up slightly so people can see kind of like the kind of real side to them as well as the professional business like side yeah i think people people buy from people people buy people buy people before they buy products right and we also buy on emotion and then we justify with logic right that there's been so many studies on that right and the thing is that we need to, you have to make that emotional connection with people so there have been times where I just started watching somebody because I had something in common with them, right? And then, you know, maybe you were that way with something with the permanent makeup world. And then you realized, oh, I really like them. And then, you know, just think about anybody you follow and that you buy from, right? And what did they do 
that was like, oh yeah, they built that connection. They showed a little bit of their um, human side. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to show that you're human. Like we watch the outtakes of movies because we like to see that people are human, right? We like to see that, yeah, like they're just real people too and nobody's perfect. And I think that's why stories became so popular and because people like to see the natural behind the scenes and not like that magazine cover where everything's always so perfect. And also just to let you know, the platform, you know, TikTok is also more laid back. So every platform has like a different vibe to it and every platform has a different strategy to it. So TikTok is all about the hashtags and, um, and trending. Um, Reels on IGTV, they're promoting it. So they, they'll promote, they've also, if you follow Adam Monseri, I have a, a whole podcast episode of all the changes that have happened with Instagram. I think it's like a few episodes back, probably about like five or six episodes back, but um, they're, all of the changes, they're gonna change up the feed. So there'll be three different feeds that you can see now, right? So it's going, it's changing. Um, so they're gonna start to re recommend more things. And so your business might, might be able to be found more. And so just kind of look at each platform on what you need to do. But Instagram is definitely sending out your reels right now. They're actually referring it and, and showing other people. So they're actually helping you build your audience right now with it. So, and here, the, the one thing I want to say about that is also that things are on like a bell curve, right? Um, and there's always that early adoption of things and you can get you can gain the most attraction i'm not saying jump on every trend early like i always give it a little bit of time to say like is it going to waste my time or is it going to stay for a while but don't jump on it at the end because then you don't get the same momentum from it amazing thank you we've got a few more questions so ketna is saying is there like an optimum length um, you think you should keep your video too, so you don't lose the interest of viewers, for instance, um, for Instagram, sorry, and Facebook particularly. Yeah, so um, so for the, the biggest thing is you have to have that hook at the beginning. You have to have that hook at the beginning. And then sometimes if you are, if you're talking about an Instagram um, or Facebook live, you should reiterate the hook throughout because remember we said people will join in the middle so like if you're just joining us today i'm so glad you're here drop a hello in the comments and today we're talking about boom and you say it and and the more you practice it it just becomes you know you'll start to ask for engagement like hey guys don't be shy I see a few of you are on here just say hello um and you know that type of thing like you just start to ask for engagement a little bit more um but the hook at the beginning will keep them there time would be actually um facebook you can have a little bit longer so they've even it's they call that more of like long form content so that can be like you know a good 20 30 minutes or so is probably good um with you know reels they they say that we should start with about eight second reels oh that's hard for me eight seconds is quick right <laughs> and so um they say you could start with some eight second reels and then you can you know do some 15 second reels and of course uh, TikTok's even looking at going past the 60 second and doing like um, two to three minute shorts. They're going to be introducing that. But is there an optimum time? Here's what I would say. Yes, we ha we are more distracted than ever. Like I say that we are in a digital distraction era, right? We have so many things vying for our attention. If your content is good, people will stay, right? I mean, Lord have mercy, Game of Thrones. People will stay for hours and hours and hours and binge, right? Because if it's good, they'll stay. Um, there are more distractions when it's on social media. So really being intentional about like, again, your messaging, I think, I think that's the part people blow over. People really are like, okay, I just need to know what do I need to do or what's like, what's the best time to post? What's the, you know, like, they just want that checklist, but then they don't really think about like, what do I need to convey right here? What does my audience need to hear, right? And what what objections do I need to come over uh, overcome, right? And so, you know, if you get the frequently objection of price, like don't we all get that objection, right? So how can you show the value, right? How can you show them that like, okay, well, yes, you should say, yes, there are 
cheaper people out there. Like, don't hide it. It's not like we all know it. I just say, and you don't have to call anybody out. You don't have to call out the competition. And I always say, don't compete on price because there will always be somebody cheaper. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about them, but just address it and say, and one of the reasons that they're, they might be cheaper is because, you know, they do this, or one of the reasons that my prices are what my prices are is because you're paying for this experience and you're paying for it. Show the value. I don't think that they know it, but show it. So Emma is saying, do you think it's important to grow your followers and how is the best way to do this? Well, so I'll tell you, um, I've grown two multi um, six figure businesses with very small following. So um, I don't know, I think on Instagram I have, I don't, I don't even pay attention, but it's like something like 2000 followers. I, I work off of a different system. I work with um, referral partners. So I have a strong network where I get in front of their audience. They've done the work of building their audience and just like this, right? Like this is, you know, PMU circle, this is Layla's audience and we're collaborating. So I'm providing value for her audience. And it's also a win-win for me, right? Cause some of you might start listening to the podcast and maybe some of you might want mentorship or whatever, right? Like there's, it's always a win-win. So I always look for partnerships that I can collaborate with. I always say you can build, which is going to be organic and build your followers yourself. You can buy, which is going to be ads, or you can borrow your audience. Borrow is the one I tend to go towards most um, because it's less time intensive. And I'm just at that um, time in my life where I just want to spend more time with my kids because they're growing up fast and I'm going to miss it. And so I'm always very mindful of um, obviously my goals and building my business, but my time and my quality of life. So uh, yes, you can build your followers. I think that obviously that's a numbers game. Like sometimes, um, you know, people will say, oh, the more followers, the more buyers. I don't necessarily agree. I know people that have very small following and have very successful businesses that have like, I'd rather you have like a thousand loyal fans that are like really part of your tribe and like really get you and, um, and are, and become buyers versus like 10,000 people that are just there for a show. Right. So I would really, I think it's more about, again, the connections that you build with people, um, versus just having followers. So I don't agree with like, like campaigns where they're like, try to buy likes or buy followers, or, um, I think all of that can really. Um, come back to hurt you, especially if you decide to run ads at some point in your business, right? If you have a bunch of followers that are not real followers, meaning that they will never become real buyers, when you try to run ads, you're going to be spending money, um, you know, if you're running ads, which is usually how you start with your audience or even a lookalike audience, you can't build a lookalike -like audience off of your audience if it's not a real audience. Does that make sense? That was, that was, that was kind of... Uh, confusing there but hopefully that makes sense so there's like there's the ad strategy there's so much on the background uh behind the scenes of that that i think um not just don't just try to build an audience for audience sake like really think about um your connections that you want to have and being intentional on how you want to show up to represent your brand and what emotions you want to evoke with people yeah, perfect. Emma just said perfect. So that's all of the questions. Yeah. Yeah. Did anybody have any other questions that we might have missed? Can we take one more moment and just hear any takeaways? Because I think if you guys can put your takeaways and then we'll pick a winner. Um, put your takeaways in the chat. Like what was the thing that stood out for you? And the reason why I love to do this is because Sometimes somebody might have said something that you didn't catch. Maybe you were taking notes, maybe you got distracted. Um, you know, something was happening in the house. You might have missed it. But if you hear other people's takeaways, then that can be really impactful. So if, if you guys don't mind putting some, some takeaways um, that you had in the chat, I would love that. And then um, the other thing is, who's going to do video? Who feels, is there anybody that is still like, oh, I'm just still really too nervous to do video? You can say it. You're scared to do video, Lynette. 
Okay, Amy says, give them three to five points. Fabulous. Okay, awesome. Motivated to do more videos. Educational videos. Good. Tetna, I love that. Introverted, scares you. You need to do it. Okay, Emma, she's going to do it. How to do, how powerful videos can be. Thank you, Cherie. Awesome. Okay, so um, I know you're nervous. Educational videos. Oh, tag me tomorrow. Yeah, tag me. I'm at April Meese um, INC on IG. So tag me and um, I'll reshare it in my stories. So there was, um, you, you can start with just your voice. Yes, guys, you can just start with just your client. Put the camera on them, right? So if you're feeling um nervous obviously you can start with just doing reveals you know a, a brow reveal before and after um yeah the lives are going to create more of a connection than versus just versus just a stagnant video so versus if you just post a video unless it's in a reel a reel will get more uh a, a reel generally will get right now will get more reach and, and then a live will get more engagement. Okay, so a live will be. Um, oh, that's a great takeaway, Karen. Um, so a live will get more engagement, and and that engagement will probably turn into more of a buyer. So a reel is going to be like a slow way to build a connection, and it probably won't turn into a buyer as fast. A live, in terms of like the hierarchy and videos will probably get you more of, will get you a client faster. And I would say, yeah, if you're scared, just start, sh just do a video of like showing, like we said, just showing your office, showing your tray, showing your clients, like start, you know, with just your voice and not, um, and not your face. And then just know that, um, you know, if you're judging yourself, if you're like, oh, I'm gonna sound ridiculous, or if I'm gonna look silly, or I don't like the way I look, all of those things, I would say, that um you at just at some point you just have to say like look you know i've come this far i've come this far i have to keep going and once you get on the other side of the mountain then you'll be like all right M most of my clients say wow i didn't die and it wasn't that bad and then they do it again and then it gets easier and easier and easier um when you're really scared so um yeah i'm gonna pick a winner but I'm just gonna read this last thing. I've done reels before, but haven't found they get big reach. Okay, um, hold on, and then it went off the screen. Um, I can uh, see if I can scroll back up there. Didn't get much reach. So it might have been that. How does your Instagram decide how to show your reels? Um, so make sure you have your hashtags, and make sure you have the hashtags that the clients would be searching for. So for example, um, you know, you don't want to use just general hashtags like microblading that gets too many hits, right? You want to use like microblading in your city, microblading in your town, right? What they would be searching. Don't use a hashtag like uh, beauty business, right? Or PMU artist, because you're going to get then other PMU artists. People always think they need to use their title. And I do this sometimes too. Um, I'll still use my title just in case people are putting that in, but in general, your stronger hashtags are going to be what people would be searching for. And so that would be like the service and your town, right? Um, the service and um, your, your state, city, country, that type of thing, like kind of start small and then go out from there is what I would say. And then find other ways of saying the service, right? So for example, if you're just saying browse, look for other ways to say browse. Um, so my, maybe you say hashtag eyebrows, write out the whole word, right? Eyebrows, um, eyebrows in my city. So look for different ways of saying it because they'll search different hashtags. Um, but there was one other question there and I think I missed it, but your hashtags are important for your reels. So, okay. Um, Kate, can you find, can you, because I can't go through the, can you just um, find somebody that was really participating a lot um, and pick pick a winner for me? Okay. I'll just put you on the spot there. Let's have a look. Yeah, just go through it and just scroll going back through the chat to see who's been quite active. Yeah, that would be awesome. 
Yeah, and there was something else that I was going to just comment on. Yeah, and you know, it's funny because you look at this and you're like, oh, I got to do it. I got to do TikTok. I got to do it just feels like one more thing on your to do list. I do not want that to be your takeaway. I want your takeaway to be. I have something to offer. I have a powerful message. I'm going to show up on video because people need to see my face, not a logo. They need to see my face and connect with my brand and connect with me and trust me. And I'm going to pick this one avenue. And I'm going to take this amount of time, right? I'm going to take this amount of time and I'm going to focus on doing it, right? I'm going to create a plan of action and I'm going to map out, right? One topic a week. I'm going to, this week, I'm going to talk about this. And next week, I'm going to talk about this. And then, you know, right? Just, just give yourself, when things feel too big, we don't do them. They feel too heavy. Break it down into small goals and pick one platform. One platform, one thing on that platform, just the reels just the IG live, whatever it is that feel, you feel most aligned with and pick that small bite. Okay, I think I've got a winner. Okay, yes, drum roll. So it's gonna be, I mean, everyone's been amazing tonight and you've all done brilliant um, in um, keeping it quite interactive as well, as well with the comments and the questions, which has been fab. But I think it's gonna go to Lynette Clark. So what does then, she win, April? What, what are you giving her? I'm giving her, um, actually, I'm giving her some done for you PMU videos and also a graphic pack. Wow. So, yeah, so she's, it's, I think it's like $150 value altogether. Yay, woohoo. Yes, Yay. and you're all winners. <laughs> you know, they always say that at the Oscars, you're all winners, we're all winners. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, just reach out to me, Lynette, um, on uh, social and anybody, if you have any questions, if you were like uh, afraid to ask, um, there's no, there's no bad question. You can always ask a lot. Of, if I don't know, I'll say, I don't know. Like I I'll tell you, like I've, you know, TikTok is not my main platform. I have a little bit on there, but I'm not really on there. So I don't have the most, the best advice on TikTok. I can, there's probably other people that'd be better to talk about. I, my wheel um of uh, expertise is really on messaging positioning help helping you cultivate your brand message and feel powerful in your brand voice to get visible and to show your value that's that's what i really focus on yeah. thank oh, you for it's having been amazing me. yeah thank you ever so much for joining us april we have slightly overrun so i hope we're not uh, delaying you too much um, but it's been really, really amazing. You're so knowledgeable. And um, I've just got this great feeling that the artists that have been on here tonight are going to go away with all like these tools, all these little tips and tricks that you've uh, obviously shared with them all. And I can't wait to see them all doing little videos. And don't forget to tag us as well, guys. So tag the PMU Circle as well as April as well, because I'm sure you'll be uh, excited to see them doing the videos. Yeah, I'll repost them amazing so thank you ever so much for joining us everyone the re replay we will get up uh loaded soon and uh thank you once again april thank you guys bye